December is a dark month. I could do without most of it. Just give me the optimistic end when we sail through the winter equinox and have that promise of light and life returning. The end of December gives us midwinter, Christmas and New Year's Eve. I enjoy them. It's just the lead-up I'm not keen on, especially after the drudgery of November. But I shouldn't complain. We had a warm house during the drudgery of November. We try to make December more exciting by resisting the Christmas build-up until the very first day of the month. And anyway, the Netherlands Santa Claus arrives on December the 5th and we celebrate that with a family meal and presents. What I should remember is that December is a pilgrimage month, a journey from a quiet beginning to the festive end. It is a pilgrimage not only for Christianity, but for many religions of the Northern Hemisphere. December should really be treated as a spiritual journey towards the light. For Christians, it is the journey to the birth of the light of the world. For the old religions, it is the journey to the winter solstice, when the sun pauses in the south and then turns back towards the north, bringing light and warmth and the promise of spring to come. My advent calendar will have a chocolate in every box, but it's supposed to be reminding me of that journey to Bethlehem. I know many people will say they're just too busy in December to think about pilgrimages and spirituality. Or well, that was my mistake too, many times, consumed on the hamster wheel of present buying, card writing, preparing for visitors, going out for meals and to parties. But it is good to pause, even if only for a minute at the beginning of each day, and ask, why am I doing this rushing about? And hopefully the answer will be out of love for my family and friends. That makes your month a spiritual month and a pilgrimage. It is a journey of service and a journey of love towards a year-end climax of joyfulness. There are so many themes running through this December pilgrimage. The Holy Family are making the long trek to Bethlehem on foot. And it was a busy time, people on the move everywhere. No wonder the inn was full when they arrived at Bethlehem. My hero of that nativity story is the innkeeper, with his kindness. In his heart he could not turn the couple away, even if it meant them sleeping alongside the donkey. It was shelter. His heart was filled with compassion for them. Another joy at Christmas is the pantomime. It's a tradition that comes from the Roman midwinter festival of Saturnalia. Then families reversed roles. The master waited on the slave. The slave could be the master for a day. The boys dressed as girls and the girls dressed as boys. They could play at being each other. And the pantomime still does that. It was a day too to thank all the people who worked hard throughout the year to make your own life comfortable. Presents were given. And from that we have our Boxing Day. Though the days of the postman and the bin man getting their tip seem to have gone the modern way. And there is too the festival of Yule, of filling the house with greenery bringing in a growing tree and decorating it with candles and lights, having a communal bonfire, the Yule log, having lights and fires, begging the sun to return, and then celebrating the winter solstice and the hinge of the year with a feast. Time then to think of the year ahead. So the end of the year is filled with tradition. However much your patience through December is tested, I hope you enjoy the journey towards the year end and its festivities. And I hope too that whatever your faith, 
you can find those spiritual moments that give life a greater meaning. We at the National Unitarian Fellowship wish you a happy December, a truly festive Yuletide and a happy Christmas. I'm Tony McNeil, the Minister to the National Unitarian Fellowship.